Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your Tree Shelf. Today I'm doing a tag video called the Carl Your Bookshelves tag. Um, this was originally created by my friend Kieran over at KD Books and um, it's quite, it's a nice tag. It's got sort of 10 questions. Um, so let's just jump right in. So question number one, what was your most recently purchased book and why did you buy it? So my most recently purchased book was this one um, which is Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend and I got this on my birthday and the reason that I bought it was because um, I have been reading this um, which is the third in the Nevermore series. I very much enjoyed books one and two and I'm really wanting to read the third one so that's the reason that I bought it. Um, it is a middle grade uh, series about Morrigan who is a cursed child who was uh, destined to die on her 12th maybe birthday and instead she gets whisked away to the Rundress Society by somebody called Jupiter North and it's about her adventures um, in Nevermore so um, yeah it's, it's a really good series I really recommend it and that's why I bought the book. Question number two is which book did you buy with no desire to read so first of all i thought this is a really strange question because surely if i was buying a book it's because i wanted to read it but i actually have found one strangely enough and it's a book that i bought because everyone was talking about it and i haven't read it because i'm too scared to read it because it's supposed to be one of the saddest books of all time um and that is a little life by hanya yanagahara so I know this is a huge book as well. I know that most people on BookTube will have read this. I know it's about a boy called Jude. I think it's about four men. Well, he's a man now. I think it's about four men growing up, but some really awful things keep happening to Jude. And so I think it's quite grim and depressing and sad. And people either don't like it or they feel completely bereft when they've finished it and then it puts them into a slump. But either way, I'm too scared to read it. So um, if you want to encourage me, then feel free to do so. Yeah. Question number three is, which book is um, an awkward shape or size? Let me just put these down to get it. Oh, right, so I have two. The first one is one I bought when I was still at school. And I've started it a few times, but I haven't finished it because, I think mainly because of its size, to be honest. It's very heavy and very big and you can't take it out with you. And it is The People's History of the United States by Harold Zinn, covering 1492 to the present. But this was written quite a long time ago. So let me just see when this was written. Um, 1990, no, 2003, this one. Oh, so I can't have been at school. I must have been at university. But um, yeah, so the reason is just because it's really heavy I and mean, really there's no way you could take it out with you and it's quite heavy to hold as well but I really want to read it maybe it's one that I need to read like in chunks and intersperse it with other things or something um so there's that one and there's another one which is equally hefty um but this was my granddad's and it's an anthology of John Steinbeck so um this has got his name in and it says 19... 90 and where he bought it which is really lovely because he's no longer with us um and it's got five um john steinbeck's in i've read east of eden and i did actually read it from here um but i haven't read the other four and i will i will do but it's another one that you can only really read at home because it's just heavy and a big old hardback question number four show and tell how do you arrange your bookshelves is there a method so yes there is i'm not going to show you my bookshelves now because They've just got a few bits of clutter on them at the moment, like the odd cup or the odd business card or just some stuff. I've also stuck some stickers on each bit. You can see like one there, but I stuck some stickers on each shelf yesterday because I was trying to count my TBR and I had to like stick a little post-it on for how many books I had on each shelf. And I think my TBR, so my physical book TBR came to 340 and then I had 26 no no it didn't 14 14 12 12 12 unread ebooks on my kindle so yeah so 352 with my total tbr yes 
But how do I arrange my shelves? Okay, so, okay, my first shelf is classic. So I've got like my cloth bound classics and any kind of classic fiction up there. My second shelf is um, political books and nature writing. My third shelf is, um, well, probably my third and fourth shelves are spiritual books. Then I have memoirs. Then I have series. So that's my first bookcase over there. And then this one here, the skinny one behind me. So I've got children's and YA at the top. Then I've got romance. Then, oh, then I've got one shelf of crime. And then it goes on to um, fiction, all my fiction by women authors, which has just done A to Z. So all the sections are alphabetised as well. And then my other bookcases, which are behind the cameras, you can't see them, are all the books I've got written by men, also alphabetised. And that's actually quite a lot smaller than the number of books I've got written by women. Then at the bottom of my bookcases, I've just got some photo albums and medical textbooks. And then I've got one little case, which is used for my TBR, some of my art stuff. And then the few books that are my husband's and a few more reference books and stuff. So, yes, that's how I have arranged my shelves. So that is very much method. And I really like how I've got them arranged at the moment. Um, so, question five. How often do you cull your books? Never, never. Hence why I've got such a massive TBR of 350 books. Um, I'm just really bad. Like, I can't give something away without trying it. So... I can happily give stuff away after I've read it, but I can't give stuff away before I've tried it, I'm afraid. Uh, question six. How do you decide whether to give away a book or keep it? So I don't find this hard. Like, if I read a book and, I, and it was kind of like, yeah, that was fine, that was good, then I'm happy to give it away. If I love a book, I will keep it. So I give, I'd say I give away quite a lot of books after I've read them. I won't give away books if they're part of a series. I won't give away books if it's by an author who I'm collecting all their works or um, a certain edition or something like that. Like, for instance, I have every Sebastian Folk's book I've read. He's one of my favourite authors. So I keep all his books um, after I've read them. And, um, yeah, for instance, or like I said, my series, I won't give any away because obviously I want to have the whole series. Um, otherwise I'm not too precious about keeping them after I've read them unless I really enjoy them and I really want to I can't bear to part with them basically um, question number seven which book is a contender for the one you've had on your shelves for the longest time so I can answer this because of Goodreads I've had a lot of books on my shelf well I joined Goodreads in 2011 I think I've got like 15 or 16 books which have been on my TBR since at least then. So I've picked two of them which I've been avoiding the most. So I'll just get those. So the first one I have is uh, Freedom by Jonathan Franzen which I bought when it came out in paperback which was 2010, 2011. So this one is from 2011 so I've had it for nearly 10 years. Um, this one, I'll read you the blurb. Um, this is the story of the Berglins, their son Joey, their daughter Jessica and their friend Richard Katz. It is about how we use and abuse our freedom, about the beginning and ending of love, teenage lust, the unexpectedness of adult life, why we compete with our friends, how we betray those closest to us and why things almost never work out as they should. It is a story about the human heart and what it leads us to do to ourselves and each other. Um, so... I, for some reason, feel like this book's getting really difficult, but it doesn't sound difficult. But I just feel like Jonathan Franzen is quite like a literary writer, maybe? Um, I don't know. But um, it doesn't look hard inside. It doesn't sound hard on the blur, but I've just been avoiding it. So that's that one. Again, spare me on if you've read it and you loved it. And the other one is Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. So, um... I watched the film of this and I loved it and that would have been pre-2011 before I bought this book that's why I bought it and I loved the film and so I don't know why I'm avoiding the book I think it's partly because the writing is like tiny so that might be part of it but I, all I remember is I think it's about two sisters and one of them becomes a geisha and it's set like pre-world war ii and then goes into the aftermath of world war ii 
and everyone I know who's read it says it's really good it's got really good ratings on Goodreads so again please um, spare me on with this one as well if um, if you've read it and loved it next question question number eight um, what have you read and is still on your shelves that you would struggle to give a summary of what happened and have a go okay let me just think about this one okay I found one so the one that I would struggle to tell you what it's about is this one, How to Be Both by Ali Smith. And actually on opening it, I found that it was signed, which I totally forgot because I've met her and she signed it for me. Um, so, okay, what I can tell you about this is it's split into two sections. One is set hundreds of years ago and one is set in the 60s. Some books are published with the older section first and some books are published with the newer section first because it can be either way around um that's about all i can tell you it's something about art um it's something about a guy like stumbling into a palace or something and then about paintings in the first half the really old half and then the second half is like about um i can remember like a mum having a coffee with her daughter and then I think they were discussing art but I remember thinking I didn't really get it and I didn't really understand what all the hype was about and that's as much as I can tell you and I never really kind of felt like I got this book so this is my botched attempt at trying to tell you what it's about the next question is cherish which book would you never throw away or give away I have two that are ones I would never give or throw away at least two but um i figured i'd start with these well no i've chosen these two for the answer the first one is this one bird song by sebastian folks which is one of my all-time favorite books um this is my granddad's edition so um i had my own copy but then when my granddad died and i got to go through his bookshelves um this was one of his favorite books as well so i wanted to have his edition so i gave my edition away and <clears throat> kept his edition and it's special also because in the inside, so he's got like, I was covering up his address, and he's put Christmas 1999, he's cut out a little um, magazine article about the book, and he's also glued in like a little bit out of the newspaper about Sebastian Folks as well. Um, and so it's kind of um, more special to me because of that, and because I know that he read this actual edition and he really loved it as well. And then the other one that I would never give away is my favourite book of all time, which is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. This is a book um, about, uh, it's set in World War Two in Germany, and it's about a little girl called Liesel Memminger, and it's narrated by death. Um, which I've obviously never had a book, heard of a book narrated by death before. And it's about Liesel and her um, her water experience. So she's a little girl. She is being, she's having to leave home with her mum and her little brother. And her little brother dies on the route to where they're going. And her mum drops her off with this family who are going to look after her during the war. And then her mum goes and she has to stay with the Huberman family. Um, in a new area of Germany and she has to um, basically learn how to live in wartime with this, with a family that she doesn't know and it's just so good it's got like little pictures in um, it's got lists in um, so like let me find so it's got some little drawings in like this and a lot of the chapters they start with like a list of what's featured in the chapter which is really nice I'm trying to find yeah so it will tell you like there was like a little list with some bullet points at the beginning of the chapter about some things that are going to happen I came across this on audio first and I loved the audible like I'd really recommend the audible um I, it was on cd I don't know if it's the same narrator on audible but I listened to it lots of times on cd and um I've read the book several times as well I just love it if you haven't tried it then please try it and then I think, is this the last question coming up? Yeah, so question 10. Choose one of these books to send to another booktuber and say why you've chosen it for them. So I am not going to do that because um, I actually do want to keep all these books. But um, I have got a book which I am going to give away. Um, it's in my 
uh, pile to donate. Um, and the first person who messages me and says they want it, I will post it to you as long as you're in the UK. Um, and that is uh, Autumn by Ali Smith. So I read this last month. Um, was it October? I think. Um, and I don't. Um, can, I don't intend to continue on with the quartet. And I didn't. Um, Ali Smith. I can see her huge, immense talent, and I like her as a person a lot. But her writing just isn't my thing. And so I've tried a couple of her books now, and I just can't get on with them very much. So if you would like to read Autumn, which is the first book in the seasonal quartet, just send me a message or comment down below. Um, and then I will happily send it to you at no cost. So that was my answers for the tag. Um, consider yourself tagged if you like to do this video um, because I don't mind who does it. I know some people like doing tags and some don't. But um, if you do it, then let me know because I'd like to watch. And um, hope you have a lovely week and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.